Congressman, good morning to you. Donald Trump now fighting 34 felony charges in New York City. Three other criminal investigations are underway, as we have all been watching here. Do you think he should remain in the race for the White House? Well, that's his decision uh, to, to make, of course. Uh, I think he will remain in the race. Uh, listen, Donald Trump, Trump sucks up all the oxygen out of, out of any media room there is. Uh, and he's also raised, I think, $10 million since that, uh, that announcement was made. So uh, certainly, I think he will stay in the race. Trump obviously remains the Republican frontrunner for now, but he, he's yet to broaden his message. The rally in Waco a couple of weeks ago, uh, in the address in the rally in Mar-a-Lago after the indictment. What do you think he needs to do to try to win more support, or is that even possible from his campaign? Oh, I think it is, <clears throat> and I think that will come about uh, when people start picking apart these 34 indictments, uh, why were there 34 charges? I think it's a huge number uh, so that people will talk about 34. But there's also a fairness issue. I mean, Tom, uh, and, and the American people understand that. Uh, Donald Trump has been under the microscope since he ran. Uh, the fake Russia uh, hoax, the two uh, impeachments, uh, the telephone calls that are under uh, uh, the microscope. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, Joe Biden's phone call, for instance, where he threatened to withhold $1 billion in aid to Ukraine unless they fired the prosecutor in, in, uh, that was looking into his son. So I think the American people, once the Democrats overreach so far and they start understanding this trend that's been going on for six years now, at least, uh, plus the weaponization of the government against normal uh, citizens, such as the four ladies from Collin County. I think you and I have had this conversation. All friends went to the January 6th. They were on the National Mall, didn't right. go near the Capitol. Three of them posted on social media. They were all visited by the FBI. The one that did not post was not. Uh, so I think the basic idea of fairness, people are going to start getting the idea that this truly is um, a, a seminal moment, a, a point of inflection in the two-tiered um, uh, justice system that we have in America today. Let me ask you specifically about these charges. They're, they're related to whether uh, Donald Trump paid two women, Stormy Daniels and Kara McDougal, to remain quiet about alleged extramarital affairs. Trump denies those affairs, but you and I are old enough to remember when the the GOP and Christian conservatives just were completely outraged at what Bill Clinton did in the White House with an intern named Monica Lewinsky. There's no similar outrage among Republicans about these allegations against Trump. Um, listen, Trump is, uh, times have changed, there's no doubt about it, but Trump is, everybody understands Trump's personality. Uh, and these have yet to be proven. Uh, Monica, Monica, Monica Lewinsky was well proven, well known, uh, there was no, there was no question there. Uh, these, these allegations are simply those allegations. Uh, so we'll see. He's denied them, and uh, we'll we'll see if what you say uh, is true once we they, this unfolds in a court of law. It, it, it's not what I say, respectfully. It's it's what the the women have, have alleged as well, Michael Cohen. But let's move on to to uh, the uh, budget that House Republicans are putting together. Um, it, it's yet to be formally presented. When, when do you expect that to happen, Congressman? And what inside that budget do you think is non negotiable with Democrats? Well, I'll go back and say that I think the budget has almost taken a backseat to the debt ceiling discussion. Uh, because what we are debating now is what we are going to ask for, what we are going to demand, what we're going to uh, negotiate with the White House uh, on the debt ceiling uh, increase. Uh, so we've got to get to a spending, uh, get spending under control. Now, what that means, uh, we're going to find out. But I will tell you that we need to pull back the COVID money. We need to do away with the green slush fund. Uh, we need to do away with the IRS bump up. Uh, we need to take back uh, some of the other slush funds that are sitting out there that have not been used for several years. Uh, if we do that, if we take back the student loans, if we uh, if, uh, take back the student loan promise, uh, we can get to several trillion dollars over the next 10 years. I'm going to guess between three and four trillion dollars. But that's not really in the budget discussion. That's in the discussions 
uh, for the uh, debt ceiling increase. For my clarity, what would come first, in your opinion, the, the debt ceiling conversation or, or a new budget? Certainly the debt ceiling conversation, because this sits in Janet Yellen's uh, uh, bailiwick. I mean, she has total discretion when she wakes up one morning and says, uh, we've reached the end of the line. Uh, and that will be a, a, a very important day. So we need to be working now on the negotiations. I think we're behind now. I think the Republican Party needs to be putting uh, positions on the table and saying, this is our position on the debt ceiling discussion. Uh, so I, I think the debt ceiling discussion is much more important to me and I think to the entire Republican conference. Congressman, you introduced the El Chapo Act, which, if passed, would take money that was seized from drug lords and from cartels and use that money to finish building out or at least partially building out where it's needed the uh, wall uh, along the U.S.-Mexico border and other security measures as well. This is something that, that's clearly partisan, but do you expect there to be any any support uh, on the Senate side of this? Oh, I would expect to, Absolutely. Uh, I would think the Texas delegation would be all over it. I mean, why would the Texas delegation, anyone in the Texas delegation, for instance, the Arizona delegation, uh, why, would, why would people be against it? Uh, this is money that we have seized that our citizens paid to the cartels for drugs. Uh, why would we not use it? Uh, money that has been paid by our citizens for their, drug, for their drugs to build a wall. I mean, I mean, this is, to me, it's an absolute uh, no-brainer. We've seized the dollars. What are we going to do with them? I hope what, we, what does not happen is like Obama gave the seized cash back to Iran. I don't want to see this money go back to the cartels. Congressman, how much money are we talking about here? Well, about $12 billion from El Chapo alone. $12 billion from El Chapo alone. Drug money is huge. And what could that money buy the United States? by on the wall. I have no idea how many miles of wall it would build, but it'd be substantial. I want to ask you about TikTok as well. There's a worldwide concern about TikTok that's been all over the headlines, as a lot of our viewers have seen, and fears that the Chinese Communist Party might be able to access uh, users' data. Australia banned it. There are a number of American universities that have banned it across the country here, too. Some people are talking about if the U.S. Congress were to ban this, that there might be some First Amendment uh, concerns around that. Do you share those concerns? I don't know yet. The bill will have to be, I'm, I'm for uh, taking care of TikTok, don't get me wrong, but we do have to be very careful, make sure the bill is well written so that we don't get into First Amendment rights. But on the other hand, we must start pushing back against the spying that's done through TikTok. If you remember the conversation with the TikTok CEO, uh, somebody used the word spying and he said, well, I won't characterize that as or words to that effect. Well, that means to me, you know, if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Uh, so, you know, I think we've got to, uh, got to be careful about their data collection through TikTok but at the same time, be very careful the way the bill is worded so that we don't get into First Amendment issues. Congressman, how soon could, could the uh, House or Senate actually vote on uh, some type of measure around this? Oh, real quick. Uh, the TikTok bill came up. In fact, I think the House passed it out uh, our last week. Uh, but uh, will the Senate act on it? I have no idea. Congressman, we always appreciate the time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.